Hi, this is Bill Stinnett with Sales Excellence. And today I'm gonna to respond to a question, how do you learn to think more like your customer? Now, some of you know that about 10 years ago I published a book called Think Like Your Customer. And this concept is really the kind of the, the underpinning of basically everything we teach throughout our, our methodology and all the different courses that we offer. Because I think the more we think like our customers, the better we understand the psychology of why customers buy, and how customers buy. Now this, this whole concept is really predicated on a story that, are, that I share a lot of times in workshops. It starts with me going fishing with, with my dad as a kid. And we always had a lot of fun, but the problem was is that, that he could catch fish all day long and I couldn't catch anything. And so I would get so frustrated and I would say, what am I doing wrong, what am I doing wrong? Well, my dad always had the exact same advice. He always said, son, if you're gonna catch a fish, you gotta learn to think like a fish. And I gotta tell you, that makes sense today, but when I was nine years old, that didn't help me at all. <laughs> and so I would even get more frustrated about that because I thought, well, I'm not a fish. I don't know how to think like a fish. It just didn't seem to make sense. I would say probably in my teenage years, I finally grasped what I believe my dad was trying to say to me, which is, if you wanna catch a fish, you have to learn to think about the things that fish think about. And that completely changed everything. I went down and I, I checked out every book on, that they had on fish at the local library. I, I joined the local bass fishing club. I signed up for every magazine on fishing that I could. I learned a ton about the way fish think and what fish think about, and I got really good at finding them and catching them. When I got involved in professional sales, however, I was taught more about what we should say as salespeople, what we should do as sales professionals. Here's the selling process that we should follow. Very little, if anything, was really about customers and how they think and, and why they make buying decisions this way or that. And so a lot of my work, as you know, surrounds this kind of the psychology of how customers think. But I've been sharing a new concept in my workshops as of late that I wanna make sure and, and put out there for those of you who maybe haven't had a chance to hear this late, haven't heard this yet. And that is this idea of focusing on the outcomes and results that our clients can really measure. And let me explain. There are a lot of things that we might bring to our client in the terms of products and services that would help their business. And certainly some of these things that, that impact their business are, are, can be good, right? We might be able to, Im, to improve some aspect or, or some part of how they operate that would make them a little bit better. But the things that really move customers are things that I call MBI, measurable business impact. And so let's talk about this. What measurable business impact really means is that we influence or we impact some specific measure or metric or key performance indicator, KPI. And so what I believe that we should do as sales professionals is to sit down either by ourselves or with our manager or a group of salespeople together or heck, even include your marketing department in this and define very clearly what are the MBIs, what are the measurable business impacts that we can make on our customer's business? And so you just simply wanna think about the different metrics and measures and key performance indicators that your clients use to gauge their business performance. You might even wanna go one step further and say, if I'm selling specifically to the vice president of, of, of R&D, how is that individual measured? What are the, the indicators of their own performance? How are they judged in terms of how well they're doing their job? And then, can we translate what we do with our products and services or as a company in terms of how that would impact those key measures that they are obviously focused on? So if this takes some knowledge of the industry and it might take some knowledge of maybe being that fish. So find somebody in your company who's been a fish before. Find somebody, if, you, if not you, find somebody on your team who sat on the other side of the desk and they can tell you the three or four or five or six things that consumed their thinking most every day. And think about the measures that your clients might use. And here, I'm just gonna throw out a few things. Maybe it's profitability or labor costs, right? Whether they're high or low. It's customer satisfaction. That's a key measure for a lot of different uh, companies and a lot of different roles within a company. Maybe it's revenue growth, okay? That's gonna be key and important for the sales department, certainly for the senior executives as well. Maybe it's uh, system downtime. That's more of a kind of an operational kind of measure, right? But here's the point. If we can have an impact on that, if we can minimize downtime, then we've got a story to tell. We've got a value proposition, if you will. 
So I would say let's, let's write down a list of as many different measures or metrics or KPIs that we can possibly think of that it can impact our client's business that are measurable, right? Some sort of a unit of measure. And those units of measures are in dollars, they're in hours. You can use a percentage, like we improved this by X and Y, Z percentage. You can even use a, like a scale of one to 10 to say that their performance in some area, on, in their opinion, is a five, but we can help improve that to a seven based on some certain criteria. There are a variety of ways to to utilize or kind of implement, if you will, some unit of measure, but I think it's key to give thought to this and how does your customer measure their business so that you can come back and say, we can help you to improve your profitability and here's how we do it. We can help you to reduce downtime and here's how we do that. Here's how we help you to optimize worker output or to reduce, uh, let's say, SG&A expenses, for example. The key is, is we wanna think of the measures and then we want to think of the movement, right? So it's increase profitability, it's reduce overhead, it's improve, uh, let's say, customer satisfaction. And when we figure out and can articulate very clearly how we can add a movement to a key metric or measure that they already care about, now we're talking the customer's language. We're really talking about something that customers want to hear about, they need to hear about, and, they, and they'll take the time to listen to. So I hope these ideas help you a little bit, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.